Welcome, game developer hobbyists! I recently created an account over on GameDev.net and started a blog series there titled Shaking Off the Game Development Rust. My starting point in this endeavor is the classic game of Pong. I followed along with a tutorial found on NoobToots.com, which I'll link in the description below. You can also find the source code on my GitHub account. The initial release, as it was provided on the NoobToots.com website, has been tagged as Pong100. I'll describe the code here briefly. If you want more depth, you can follow along yourself over on the NoobToots.com website. This is a Windows-only implementation, and it uses OpenGL in the FreeGLUT library. The main method initializes the screen, registers a draw and update callback, and then starts the main loop. The draw method clears the buffer, draws the racket's ball and score, and then swaps the buffer onto the visible screen. The update method checks for keyboard inputs, updates the ball position, schedules the next update call, and then tells FreeGlut that the next frame is ready for display. The pull keyboard inputs method checks if the W or S key are pressed for the left paddle, and up or down arrows are pressed for the right paddle. The update ball method first moves the ball for this frame, then performs a number of collision detection checks against the paddles and walls. At the end, it normalizes the vector of the ball's direction to a length of 1, in order to ensure that the ball moves at a consistent speed. On my blog post, I mentioned a number of improvements I wanted to make. Among them are some collision detection fixes, which will be the main focus of this video. The first issue is that the players can move their paddle off the screen. As we can see, the code just continues to move the paddle when the associated key is pressed, regardless of its current position. We can fix that by checking if the new Y position of the paddle moves it outside of the playing area. If it does, we'll just push it right back. I organize this into two new functions, Move Racket Up and Move Racket Down. And here's how this looks. No more moving the paddle off screen. The second issue is related to the ball bouncing against the top and bottom walls. This isn't very noticeable when the ball speed is low, but if we increase that, we start to notice it going off screen momentarily. One of the things that was bugging me at this point is that the top and right sides of the playing area seem to extend a little beyond the containing window. So I added some variables named play area width and play area height that bound the playing area a little further inside the window. Back to the issue at hand, the section of the update ball function we're interested in is the collision detection with the top and bottom walls. We see that it currently only reverses the Y direction of the ball, which won't apply until the next frame. This means it might go off screen by several pixels in this frame, before it bounces back into the playing area in the next frame. We can fix this by bouncing the ball back into the playing area by the same amount that it left the playing area. And the third and final issue is related to the collision detection between the ball and the paddles. As with the previous issue, this is only noticeable if we increase the ball speed. If we make the ball move at the same distance per frame as the width of the paddles, we can actually see it's blasting right through them and increasing the score. What we really need to do is find out the Y position where the ball crosses the plane of the paddle. At the top of the update ball method, let's help ourselves out by recording the position of the ball from the previous frame. We then update our collision detection with the paddles to first check if it crossed the plane. I should note that I had rather embarrassingly initially committed this with a glaring bug that allowed the ball to pass through undetected if the ball speed was any factor of 10. You screwed up Pong! <coughs> <laughs> this percent variable is calculating a value between 0 and 1, indicating how far along the x-axis the ball crosses the paddle's plane. The Y position where the ball crosses the plane can be determined by seeing how far along the Y axis the ball would have moved if it only moved that far. Now that we've discovered that, our collision detection can limit its check to the line segment of the paddle. Similar to what we did with the ball bouncing off the top and bottom walls, we also want to bounce the ball off the paddle by the remaining percentage of its original flight path. Without this last bit, it's still possible that the later collision test against the left and right walls would be reached causing the scores to be updated erroneously. So with these three items related to collision detection tackled, I've tagged this in my GitHub repository as Pong110. The next set of changes will involve refactoring the game state out of all these global variables, and encapsulating them into some kind of data structure. 